commemorations and monuments are not so much about the past as they are stressing values that we have in the present and that we want to hold on to. Last night I saw a research that was uh, done this year in which um, uh, 59 percent of the interviewees said that uh, the commemoration of the Second World War should also include the victims of other wars. I was just triggered by why, uh, what Jair said, that there was such a proliferation in the course of time of who all should be included that <clears throat> then uh, there was a complaint about the lack of specificity. So I do think that we should be as inclusive as possible within uh, our commemorations, but um, uh, I, I don't exactly see why we cannot commemorate other wars, but we should explain what it is that we are doing when we are commemorating. And I'm very much um, in agreement with Susan that commemorations and monuments are not so much about the past as they are stressing values that we have in the present and that we want to hold on to. So I think one of those values should be that we want to have a society, form a society with each other in which people have equal chances to be commemorated and to be uh, taken seriously in their humanity. Yeah. But I was struck by something that I read in White Innocence um, about the ways in which in Holland, um, the commemoration of the Second World War has been used to gloss over colonialism. I think it's really striking that if you think about European history outside of Germany, Germany is a special case. Germany should keep in some form, but we can talk about why the forms that they're currently using are extremely problematic. Um, in some form, Germany should commemorate its national crimes, and I think it also should be acknowledged that Germany is the first country in the world to make its national crimes the center of its national narrative. Nobody likes doing that, okay? We like remembering our her heroic yeah. parts. Um, if we can't remember our heroic parts, we like to remember the times that we were victimized. But to actually say, no, actually, this historical crime is part of our national narrative, um, that should be done. But I'm struck by the ways in which other European countries emphasize the war and the occupation and the ways in which people died. And some people, uh, you know, the Brits in particular, did make a major contribution to winning the war. And the fact that decolonialization happened so quickly after the war, not accidentally at all, it was much easier to brush under the carpet and to say, you know, to take this role, well, we were victims of the Nazis, rather than looking at um, what was actually going on in colonialism. So commemoration can very easily be instrumentalized. Uh, what I'm uh, doing in, in that book is I wrote an ethnography of Dutch self-representation, how we like to think about ourselves. And then there are a number of paradoxes that we do not see as paradoxes at all. They are totally contradictory, but we hold both of them up. So one of those paradoxes is with regard to the Second World War, we were the victims of the Germans. Well, at the same time, we were perpetrators of extreme violence in Indonesia. So all the time you hear about that first part, about being the victims, and the second part, for the longest time, came up, it flared up, uh, one kind of scandal or another, and then it died down again. We were absolutely refusing to make that central to the narrative we uh, tell about ourselves. 
Now, since uh, maybe about 15 years, there is some scratching of the surface on this being perpetrators. And there is a lot more to be said about also this self-image that we had for the longest time, that all of us were in the resistance. We all were against the Germans. Of course. Uh, meanwhile, at the so same the time... the French, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, of all European countries, except for Poland, I believe, most Jews were abducted from the Netherlands. So there is a very fraught reality that we have uh, beautified and combed into this integral reality where we were victims. And it is only very recently that a more complete picture is coming to the fore. And I must say that um, it is black people who have uh, propagated this other narrative that is much older. It precedes the Second World War, in which the Netherlands was a formidable imperial nation, which owned all kinds of territories in the world, really huge, with, again, the paradox that we didn't learn anything about that in school. And that pretty much is still the case, eh? that in um, education from the lowest levels in a primary school, we don't learn anything about that. So it is full of contradictions, our self-representation. And I think one of the ways to get out of this is uh, taking an, um, um, uh, our cue from Germany that it should be a mandatory part of education at all levels.